go nine Jerome's. So would have had this video out sooner, except that game sent me into a coughing fit. It's just so frustrated, man. So, and I, I know the objective observer will be like, oh, that was a thrilling game. But for the Vikings, it's been a season of shoulda, woulda, coulda. Now, I understand there's built-in excuses. Oh, no Kirk Cousins. Oh, no Justin Jefferson. I, I fully understand that. But the Vi it really makes no excuse, especially over the last four games, where the Vikings should have beat the Bengals. You had a 17-3 lead heading to the fourth quarter. No excuses. Uh, you, you scored three points and one against the Raiders. Congratulations. Mm. Uh, you completely were inert against the Bears. And play calling at the end of the game. First down wins the game. And it's just atrocious. Atrocious, man. And the Broncos, hey, you had the ball at the end. Chance to drive down and kick a field goal for the win? Nah. But it is what it is. Uh, the Vikings are indeed 7-7. Seven and seven, And there's really no one to blame but ourselves. And this is where we're currently at. And it sucks. I, I like Kevin O'Connell as a coach. No, he's not going to get fired, but it, it say, take a, a coach who was on the hot seat. Say say you put Brandon Staley uh, in the, in these last four games, the way that he meant. Well, actually, Staley's a bad example because he's a defensive coach, but an offensive play calling head coach who was on the hot seat, and he called two tush pushes with the smallest guy on the team pushing, mainly because he wanted to stay in 11 personnel, which is just ridiculous. Uh, and then also the play calling at the end of the Bears game where your defense gave you two fourth quarter turnovers. And then what what happened at the Broncos game? It's just inexcusable. Inexcusable, man. All right? But uh, we got winners and losers starting off with the losers. It's rough. Uh, so the tush push with Powell. So once, sort of understand. Twice, ridiculous. I am. There's really no words. And what really sucks is that Kevin O'Connell called a pretty competent and very good game. But that was just inexcusable. I mean, I actually would have understood if they would have just tried the 59-yard field goal with uh, Greg Joseph. Give yourself a shot there. Uh, Nick Mullins making some dumb plays. A bad interception to start things off. And then a, a very stupid one where he was getting sacked and threw the ball straight up in the air. The Josh Dobbs special. And, yeah, you, you were you were leading which is great, and the whole thing about it is that, hey, when you were up 17-3, to would it have been nice to have those extra 6-14 to points he left on the board in the first half? Yes, and that goes in the first half mistakes. Justin Jefferson throwing. That, that was one of the nice comic relief moments from the game. J.J. with a nice crisp bounce pass. Mm. Uh, Byron Murphy Jr. in overtime. So, again, what sucks is uh, Murphy is sort of like O'Connell, where he played a very good reg uh, uh, regulation but, you know, allowing a boy to go forever on that third and nine. Yeah. A couple false starts, that fourth quarter of defense, which gave up three straight touchdown drives to Jake frickin' Browning. Just chucking up arm punts and grenades all over the place, whatever. And also, speaking of, uh, so the T. Higgins uh, second touchdown, where he made a pirouette right at the one, Blackman is just watching. Or he was, ba he, I, I think he thought that a Caleb Evans picked it off because he was just like signaling. But if he had continued to, through the play, he probably could have knocked Higgins out of bounds before Higgins got both feet in. Could have broke that play up. Mm. Also, fourth quarter defense, third and 21, inexcusable. It's just a, a mess all over the place. So, but, you know, some of the winners from the game Jordan Addison, bust out game, 6 4. Uh, uh, six for how many how many super yards they have? If only we we knew. Uh, six for uh, a buck eleven and two touchdowns on six targets, and uh, he was the recipient of many of Nick Nick Mullins Yolo throws. Uh, Ty Chandler, I mean the Vikings. I mean Ty Chandler looked the best for a Vikings running back since prime Dalvin. But twenty three for a buck thirty two and a touchdown, five point seven yards per carry. It's almost like. Hey, Ty Chandler should have got a chance on third and inches and fourth and inches. Mm. Uh, Nick Mullins. <sighs> so you had the good and the bad in Nick Mullins. 26-33 uh, to 33 for 3 or 3 two touchdowns, two picks. The two picks were inexcusable. Frankly, the two touchdowns were inexcusable too. Uh, both on very ill-advised throws to Jordan Addison that worked out. Uh, Daniil Hunter, uh, two sacks today. Got a fistful of pressures as well. Was really uh, pushing the issue with the Bengals on line. Uh, career high, uh, number of sacks, 15.5 with three games to go. Pay Daniil. Pay him. 
pay him, take care of him. Uh, Caleb Evans, uh, flying around making plays. Our first career interception. Also pass broken up in overtime, which was not DPI. Hawkinson was a beast over the middle, 6 for 63 on seven targets. Now, if only it was 6 for 64, then we wouldn't have gone through the whole tush push thing. But is what it is. Uh, JJ made his presence known, 7 for 84 on 10. Ivan Pace Jr., so homecoming and his 23rd birthday. He played himself a great game, nine tackles. I uh, was this close to a couple sacks. And also, he stoned Joe Mixon at the goal line. He just needed, you know, Daniil Hunter or his teammates to clean clean it up a little bit on that fourth and inches play. <sighs> so close. Najee Thompson, uh, special teams play of the game where he shoved uh, Bengal into the punt returner, which is not a penalty. It was awesome to see, man. Uh, Jonathan Bullard, a big sack in overtime. Also made some nice plays in the run game. The entire offensive line, overall, they played well. Uh, they blocked great for Ty Chandler. And uh, e- even though Mullins had three sacks, I mean, you can make a good case that at least two of them were on him, h- hanging on to the football way too long. And also, winner, you got to give up to T. Higgins. Like, my God. Uh, also, he had another catch on Blackman, which was ruled not a catch. It was close. Uh, but just that insane catch at the end, four for 61 and two. Like, he was the reason why the Bengals won. It, it wasn't Jake Browning. That, that's for damn sure. But, again, as frustrating as it is, um, and the season has been full of frustration. Again, should have, would have, could have beat the Bucks and the Eagles and the Chargers and the Chiefs and the Broncos and the Bears and the Bengals. And, yeah, again, the fact that the Vikings are doing this without Kirk Cousins – I mean, there's a degree of an excuse in there, but also, uh, again, Kevin O'Connell, he's a good coach. I want him to be great, but it seems like late game, short yardage play calling, he, he's bad. It, it's a it's a blind spot for him. So hopefully it's something to work on. But again, with or without Kirk Cousins, you know, the, the end of game management against the Broncos, the Bears and the Bengals, it's inexcusable. And, again, if Kevin O'Connell was on the hot seat, I, I think that would have tipped the scales a little bit. But as of right now, uh, the Vikings are alone still in the sixth seed at 7-7. Seven and seven. Now there are five, six, and seven teams uh, going after it. Also, hey, we, we need the Buccaneers to beat the, the Packers one time. Let's go from there, man. But, uh, again, you can scoreboard, wa- scoreboard watch all you want. But bottom line, the Vikings still have – Two games against the Lions and a game against the Packers. Two of them at home, loud and proud at U.S. Bank Stadium. Whiteout on December 24th, uh, next Sunday against the Lions. Got to have that one. I mean, basically the season comes down to Week 16 uh, against Detroit. Say it, Detroit, man, this is the Super Bowl. So, again, as frustrating as this one was, I mean, the Vikings can still make the playoffs. They can still be dangerous. Uh, the defense the defense has been great minus that fourth quarter. Uh it's frustrating. It's frustrating, man. But uh, your thoughts are thoughts. Winners and losers from Vikings and Bengals. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Want to support the work? Put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.